You know, every man at some point in time has to make a decision that he doesn't know is the right decision, but he has to make it nonetheless. And that decision is selling my Sony FX3. Let me get my flame suit on because I know I'm about to get cooked in the comments. What's up, y'all? It's Tight Shirt Terry Warfare, and I'm back for another video. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have that. I got two things I need to ask you first. The first thing, it is my birthday today. I'm turning 38 years old, so please take it easy on me in the comment section. The second thing I ask of you is watch the entire video before you formulate your opinion on the camera that I am selling the Sony FX3 for. Okay, now that we got that out the way, before I get into the camera I'm selling it for, I need to give the Sony FX3 its due respect. First of all, the FX3 might be my favorite camera that I've ever owned. I bought this thing with my own money, and it is literally a fantastic freaking camera it's not perfect i've been very vocal to sony about the things that i dislike about the sony fx3 but there are minor minor quirks in an otherwise literally amazing freaking camera i am in no way shape form or fashion condoning that you sell your sony fx3 do not do what tight shirt terry warford is about to do because you might regret it like i might regret it okay so part of this video is i gotta justify <laughs> doing because it might be dumb and i might end up buying another sony fx3 down the line but right now my sole purpose of selling it is because to be honest with y'all i want a sport bike and i don't want to finance a sport bike i don't really want to go take a couple thousand dollars out of my account so i figured the best way would be to offload the gear that i don't necessarily need okay now i think i need to define what i do with my cameras because i am blessed to have several cameras thank you god uh but i need to define what i do and maybe that'll help you make sense of this foolish mistake i'm about to make so first of all i don't shoot many gigs professionally anymore the majority of any shoots that i do are photography and they're like events i do the occasional like trailer for the tattoo shop or the barber shop like a little hype videos and stuff like that but i could literally do that on every camera that i own i don't necessarily need a cinema camera to get that done now with that being said again i'm not saying that you should sell your sony f fx3 for people who are still making professional client videos whether it's just individual clients bigger clients or maybe you just want that baby cinema camera for your studio then yes the sony fx3 is still a fantastic camera it has some major competitors i'll say that like the lumix s5 mark ii that i'm filming on right now is a beast but there's still some things that it has that the sony fx3 has that you know those things are intangible to me like 4k 120 slow-mo without a crop 4k 60 without a crop and then all the other things that the fx3 offers the amazing body the multiple record buttons the tally lights the built-in fan if i didn't say that the dual card slots and the mount points and everything else that the fx3 offers still to this day it is a beast of a camera but as i said it is two years old and sony has been putting out a whole lot of new cameras with new technology now, I'm not saying because of that that you should go sell the camera that you got. I'm not saying that. I'm only saying if you got the money, then it's okay to chase gear. Do not chase gear thinking that the gear you have is invaluable and incapable anymore because that's not the case. The FX3 can run with any video camera out there. Now that I have that out the way. <sighs> Okay, I'm ready to reveal what camera that I'm selling it for. Oh man, okay, the FX3 has to go. And it has to go because I have other cameras that could do what it does. Maybe not all at the same time, but they could do what it does. For example, my Lumix S5 Mark II X. I actually prefer using this camera over my Sony cameras in studio because I prefer the look. I prefer all the built-in monitoring tools and everything that Lumix cameras have to offer. My Sony a7 IV can shoot amazing video and for those projects that I need, to go shoot a quick video at the barbershop or something like that it's more than capable and the camera that i've chosen to replace it with is a camera that you've seen me talk about on this channel before and as you can tell i'm kind of building up the suspense <laughs> I'm loving this right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, okay? The Sony FX3 is getting sold for the Sony ZV-E1. Now, go ahead, I'm gonna give y'all, y'all 20 seconds in the comments to call me dumb, stupid, and any other insult that you wanna go ahead and throw my way. I'm waiting. What? Are you kidding me? <sighs> I can feel it coming now. Bow, 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 bow. I can feel it. I, I hear y'all saying it already. Kidding me? Yes, the Sony ZV-E1 is the camera 
that I am selling the Sony FX3 for. And and before you you cuss me out, let me explain, okay? Again, I'm not saying that this is the best move for you. I'm not saying that anybody should make this move, but I need to circle back to the things that I use the Sony FX3 for. Yes, I'm so happy that I have it. It is very expensive though, it's 3,800 bucks. And the Sony ZV-E1 for my use case, okay? My freaking, my use case is more than enough. It gives me majority of the things that I get in the Sony FX3 that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Terry, what are those things? Things like amazing image quality. It is literally the exact same image and chain as the Sony FX3 Mini. The video looks exactly the same. It's got the same dual base ISO. It's got the same level of dynamic range. It's got the same set of frame rates and resolutions, which means Terry can still do 4K 60 and 4K 120 uncropped pretty much, unless you go 4K 120 with the Sony ZV-E1. The second thing is I do not like taking my Sony FX3 out. I get insurance, I get all that stuff, but at the end of the day, it is still a $4,000 camera and it looks freaking expensive. The Sony ZV-E1 does not look expensive. This looks like any other $1,000 camera out there. And I realize I'm giving up some things. I'm giving up dual card slots. I'm giving up a built-in fan, which is crazy, right? Because I always talk about built-in fans and how I cannot stay overheating i'm gonna get back to that in one second but i'm giving up tally lights everywhere i'm giving up the industrial design and mount points i'm giving up things like uh cine ei i'm giving up things like built-in anamorphic support but all of those things for me are really not that big of a deal because first of all i didn't feel like sony's implementation of those features were the most robust they're still more robust on my lumix cameras and also when do i really use those things i don't really use anamorphic lenses i don't really use cinema lenses i'm okay with not having cine ei as long as i have s log 3 i never output raw over hdmi but then i pick up things with the sony zv E1, like a lower cost number one that we just talked about. Number two, a better autofocus system than the Sony FX3 has. Remember at the beginning of this video, I said that the FX3 is starting, starting to show its age, right? Well, that's because Sony has come out with so much new stuff in these newer cameras that might be gimmicks to some of y'all, but for me, they're not. Like auto framing is a really, really nice feature to have. Dynamic stabilization. Okay, if you use a wider lens, like a 16 to 35 or something like that, or one of the ultra wides, like it is so good. And being able to get that level of stabilization in the camera this small without needing the gimbal, as long as I'm using a, lot, a wider lens, yo, it is really, really game changing. Plus the features on the screen, like being able to touch the record button and all that stuff, those are clutch. Now, some of you will argue, well, I got physical controls on the Sony FX3. And yes, that has been an adjustment because I much prefer physical dials and buttons. And the ZV-E1 is missing some of those. But then I pick up things like the built-in vlog mic, which is a really, really good mic as long as you are not in super challenging scenarios. A lot of videos I've recorded with this mic and people did not realize that I was not using an external mic. It's really good in the pinch where you don't have an external mic with you. And it's also good when you wanna travel and pack light. It's got a microphone in it that you could depend on that works really, really well. Now to touch on the overheating thing because I made a big deal about the Sony ZV-E1 overheating when it came out. But now that I have my own, it's never overheated on me. I've never been in a situation where the Sony ZV-E1 has even given me a temperature warning. Now, to be fair, I'm not in the freaking Mojave Desert, okay, filming hour-long documentaries. Most of my videos are YouTube videos like this, or even if I am outside and it's hot outside, I'm not recording super long clips. I'm running the gun and I'm bam, five minute clip here, six minute clip there, B-roll there, B-roll there. And for those purposes, the ZV-E1 has served me so freaking well. So the question is, why don't you just keep both of them why do you need to sell the sony fx3 because Terry, you're probably going to regret it at some point you're probably going to get that offer for a job where they really have these requirements and x y and z and you really need a redundancy of dual car slots and the built-in fit yes i understand that it might happen it might happen <laughs> but for the now i need that money for it and the zve1 is serving me nice and and well and it's filling the gap where the sony fx3 otherwise is so again i'm not recommending that you sell your sony fx3 if you have one keep it but if the things that I talked about that are important to me are also important to you, and you might wanna put some money back into your pocket to maybe use for lenses or whatever the case may be, hey, 
The ZV-E1 can stand in the Sony FX3's shadow and actually bring in some ways more to the table than the Sony FX3 can. So with that being said, yes, the FX3 is going up for sale. I'm going to miss it. And again, I might regret it. And if I get into a situation where I need another one, I will finagle my way into another one. You can bet that I'm the master finagler when it comes to technology cameras. I will figure out a way to, to hey, I'm going to freaking get one if I want another one. Okay. But, uh, that's my, that's my justification for it. I know a lot of y'all going to ask what microphone am I using? This is actually the DJI mic. And I want to shout out original Dobo because he 3d prints these handles so let me show you real quick the dji mic is actually right there can you see it okay so that's the dji mic it sits right on the inside and he made this handle that actually has a mount to it also that you can put on a mic stand let me get it so you will put this back on and then you can mount it right to a regular mic stand so these things are freaking clutch i'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab one so that is my justification that's the reason why i'm selling the sony fx3 i'm gonna miss you so much baby you've been so good to me and i might have to get one of your twins on the back end or something like that but for now sony zv e1 is goaded and i love this camera despite its quirks despite its flaws i love the sony zv e1 so now that i'm finished okay let me know what you think in the comment section am i crazy am i dumb am i stupid <laughs> or do you agree with with me okay let me know down there and i will catch y'all in the next video much love y'all 50k is about to be here we only got a few more subs to go y'all he's a chicken grease type short wolf and i'm out peace